You know what? Numbers and formulas are beautiful, but when they turn into patterns, shapes, and colors, math feels more like an art, and it feels alive. 1. Draw a square of side length A. Its area will be A square. Then draw another square of side length B like this. Its area will be B square, right? Then complete this rectangle such that this will be of side length A and this will be B. Similarly, complete this rectangle such that this will be of side length A and this will be B. Now, for this rectangle, make a diagonal like this, and for this rectangle, make a diagonal like this. Both the diagonals will have the same length, right? Because both these rectangles have the same side lengths A and B. So let us label them as C. Now see the magic. Let me first duplicate this entire thing. Now shift this right triangle to the right like this. Then shift this right triangle downward like this. Finally, move this right triangle diagonally like this. Oh my God. What we have now formed is a square of side length C, and the rest of the four right triangles remain as it is. Its area is C square, which means both these square areas, or A square plus B square, now equals the area of this big square, or C square, and folks, this is the famous Pythagoras theorem. 2. Take two non-negative numbers, x and y. Find their average, which will be x plus y over 2. We also call this average as an arithmetic mean, or a, m, of x and y. Now multiply both numbers together, and then take the square root of the result. This new value is called the geometric mean, or gm, of x and y. There is a thing called in math, the amgm inequality, which tells us that the arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean, with equality holding true only when x equals y. Now there is also a theorem in math called Thales theorem, in which if you draw a triangle inside a circle, such that one side of the triangle is the diameter of the circle, then the angle opposite to this side will always be a right angle or 90 degrees. Okay, but how is this connected to the AMGM inequality? Draw a line segment of length x plus y, such that this is x and this is y. Now draw a semicircle using this line segment as the diameter, such that the radius of this semicircle will be x plus y over 2, or we can say that this radius is the am of x and y. Now from this point, draw a perpendicular line, such that it meets the semicircle like this. Label this length as p. Now connect this point with the ends of the diameter like this. We get a triangle, right? But hey, because of the Thales theorem, this will be a right-angled triangle. Now, if this angle is A, then this angle will be 90 minus A, because this is a right triangle. But this is also a right triangle. So this angle will be A itself. And since this is also a right triangle, this angle will be 90 minus A. This means both these right triangles have the same angles, and thus they are similar. So we get this side length, or P, over this side length, or X, equals this side length, or Y, over this side length, or P. This means P square equals X times Y, or P equals square root of XY. Therefore, we can say that P is the GM of X and Y. Now, no matter the length of X and Y, the chord length P, or the GM, will always be less than or equal to the radius of this semicircle, or the AM, right? Thus, we get this inequality. Also, you can see that the equal sign will hold true for X equals Y. 3. This one is quite simple. Draw a number line horizontally like this, such that this is 0, this is half, this is 1, this is 1 and half, and this is 2. Now draw a line vertically of length 1. If you connect this point with half, we get a right triangle of side length 1 and a half. So using Pythagoras' theorem, the length of this hypotenuse will be equal to 1 square plus half whole square, right? So hypotenuse will be square root of 1 plus 1 over 4 or 5 over 4, 
which is equal to square root of 5 over 2. Now rotate this hypotenuse like this. What do you think this length will be? Yes, right. It will be half plus square root of 5 over 2, which is none other than the golden ratio, or this number. 4. In level 1, draw a square of side length 1 like this. Its area will be 1, and thus write 1 here. Now in level 2, draw two squares of side length 1 like this. Their areas will be 1 plus 1 or 2, and thus write plus 2 here. Then in level 3, draw three squares and write plus 3. Keep doing it till we go to level n, where we make n such squares and write plus n here. So the total area of all these squares equal 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on till n. Now cut this array along this hypotenuse so as to divide it into one large triangle and n small right triangles of side length one by one. These will be n triangles because we get one such triangle from each level. Now what will be the area of this one small triangle? It will be one times one by two or half, right? So the area of all these n small triangles will be n times half, or n by 2. Now this big triangle has side length n and n, and thus its area will be equal to n times n by 2. So the total area equals n by 2 plus n times n by 2. Take n by 2 as common from here to get n by 2 times n plus 1, which is nothing but the formula for the sum of the first n natural numbers. Wow! Noise! 5. Draw a semicircle of radius C like this. Now, from the center of this semicircle, draw a point like this such that this length is equal to A. So this will be equal to C plus A, and this will be equal to C minus A, right? Now again, draw this perpendicular chord like this and label its length as B. Now draw this hypotenuse such that its length is the same as the radius of this semicircle, or C. In our AMGM inequality proof, we have just seen that this B square is the same as this length, or C, plus A times this length, or C minus A. But hey, we know that when we expand it, we get C square minus A square, and this equals B square. So A square plus B square equals C square. Wow, it's Pythagoras again. And that's it. If this video gets 15,000 likes, then I will make another visually stunning math video. So go.